guess he's Hello, and welcome to episode 120 of the QDR Crusaders for October 28th, 2014. Burned tried to start talking while I was doing the intro. <laughs> None of that's happening. My name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the host, and uh, that's basically it this week. <laughs> so uh, I'm joined today by... Habundra Owana, the special guest coordinator and stuff. And the editor this week. Editor this week, that's what yeah. I was looking for. That's the end stuff. I, I'm Flutter Guy 17, and uh, I'm the media manager for the podcast, and yeah. Flutter Guy 317! I don't think I've ever face palmed as quickly as I have. And that's that's got to be a new record. That's like what, like 15 seconds in. <laughs> Dude, Dude, I've been away for like a week. Mm. I had to let it spill out. Were you out. away in Japan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. I didn't know we that. were in the happy land of Japan, also known as South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> South Dakota, also known as New Japan. <laughs> Welcome Actually, to well, South Dakota. I Home. was gonna be like, oh, segue into what I was doing in South Dakota. Like, oh, we were hunting for ringneck Chinese pheasants. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that sounded a bit far. But anyway, <laughs> so I, I was gone on vacation with my father. We went to South Dakota for pheasant season, and we were uh, shooting shotguns and a bunch of other guns and shooting and stuff, and it was awesome. It was a blast. I've never shot that many guns in my life. <laughs> And it was cool, and so that was kind of my vacation. I got to spend a week with my uh, father at a lodge on a pheasant ranch, I guess it were. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> that you, got to like be a, you got to be a co-pilot, was... too, and fly on a private we... jet, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, we got to take uh, my dad's company's private jet there. So, like, it was so weird not having to go through customs because we had, like, whiskey and Whoa. lots of alcohol. Well, wait, wait, wait. Customs and security. Because you wouldn't go through customs US to US flight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Security, whatever. That yeah. stupid, <laughs> awful thing you have to go through when you go through the airport so the you don't TSA. mess stuff up. But it's a yeah. private plane. So you have to do that. So you're just like, I had a pocket knife and I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't bring this. And I was like, wait, no one cares. <laughs> I, you know, I never I never thought about that before. But I, yeah, yeah, I guess I guess private planes, you don't need to go through that yeah. kind of security. And so like all of like uh, my dad and I and his friends, they all had lots of... And lots of guns and ammunition. We just like, yeah, this is America, point. throw that on the plane <laughs> and we're take it to South Dakota. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 Cool. Well, that sounds yeah. like fun. Yeah, that's cool. I got to ride co pilot on the way back, which is really cool. So, shout out to Steve, the pilot, who basically the entire time just like described to me how air traffic control works and <laughs> how the airplane works and what buttons to never hit while I'm in the co-pilot seat, like the emergency engine shut off, <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. That was the first conversation, wasn't it? Uh, that was actually the very last conversation. I was like, when, right when, before we were starting to land, I was like, this entire time I've been really self-conscious about not touching anything because, because I'm really scared that I'll flip one of these switches and we're all going to die. And I was like, so out of curiosity, what button should I never hit? And he's like, this button right here, and just flips open this plastic switch and I'm like ah! <laughs> just make this horrible womanly noise and he flipped open the plastic cover for a uh, switch and he's like this switch right here it's the emergency engine shut off button and it's a last ditch effort to put the engines down so we can glide down to the ground without burning to death and I was like oh uh, <laughs> wow Good that's know. cool <laughs> well then yeah yeah so yeah that was so really do fun you, do you think Steve's gonna watch this episode and get that shout out hell no <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not no, not, a not at all <laughs> he's too busy flying planes yeah mm -hmm. too busy being awesome yeah well okay. shout out to you anyway Steve you're awesome shout out, <laughs> shout out to all of our awful viewers <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Aww. We love you could guys. be out flying planes for a living getting paid thousands of dollars or you could be watching this horse show <laughs> and I just offended every pilot who's ever watched our show. <laughs> Literally a thousand dollars. Okay. You know how Multiples expensive it is though to uh, actually get to that that point. Like yeah. I have a I have a coworker who's a pilot just like for fun, and he spends inordinate amounts of money on it. Yeah, because it is. it's insane. It's really expensive. tough to be a pilot. Yeah, and I mean the job itself too is like a really difficult job. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was actually one of the conversations we had about like how tough it is to be an air traffic controller and how to be like a pilot for a lot of situations. And there's like seniority and when like you're in a lot of uh, pilot fields or like uh, airplane mechanic fields, where basically if you're a new guy trying to get started into it for like the first five almost to 10 years, you don't have seniority because there's dudes have been doing it for 10 to 20 years. So yep. you basically work graveyard shifts and just yep. dirt shifts. Yep. Yeah. My, yeah. Cousin, my cousin's a pilot for Air Canada. And uh, basically you just wait 
for the person at the top to retire, and then everyone moves up a rank. Yep. <laughs> hey, seniority. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so in case anyone hasn't noticed by now, um, Mr. Atmos Park is not here. People know the icons faded. <laughs> if they're only listening, then he didn't introduce well, himself. Well, they could be, it, yeah. they could be listening audio. Well, he didn't introduce you himself. Know, so and he's like not here. drawing things, because we have beautiful artists who watch the show. We love you. Yeah. He's feeling, he's feeling sick, and also he's moving today. So yeah, he's um, moving. Exciting. It, it, so it kind of sucks that he's sick on his moving day because that's like uh it's a stressful day that's yeah sure. yeah i wonder if that's kind of what exacerbated the whole sickness yeah maybe yeah also that could I, happen. I found myself using that word more often yeah it's i don't know why did you get a word of word of the day calendar <laughs> no is it like word, word of the month is it the word of the month like <laughs> maybe it's a really lazy word of the day calendar. It's just one word every month. <laughs> twelve words. We printed twelve words and made a calendar. <laughs> it's not even that you have to flip the pages. It's just like it's on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hopefully he'll be back next week. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish I had a couch that talked. <laughs> so whenever I was like, oh, exacerbated, it'd be like, oh, it's a sick word. <laughs> like, 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 like Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> okay well i want to talk about my next thing now that like because that was really funny (laughs) the next thing is really not funny no it's okay go on okay so i mean i'll make a joke out of it it'll be great i no uh, (laughs) no you won't (laughs) oh okay i like based on our conversation before this like like i actually wonder if you know what happened no but i don't i have no clue okay i've been gone for a week so um yeah on on Wednesday uh people people know that I live in Canada obviously but I live in uh, Canada's capital uh, a city called Ottawa um and on Wednesday uh there was an incident that happened in Ottawa that locked down basically the entire downtown core uh for people who don't know like burned apparently hmm. there was a a guy who uh had a gun and uh shot someone at a war memorial and then uh ran into Parliament and uh, started shooting there. Uh, luckily, no one in Parliament uh, died. Unfortunately, the person at the War Memorial did. Um, and it basically, it shut down the entire downtown core for uh, probably six to eight hours. Um, so, I mean, I guess I, I didn't really want to talk about it because it was something that just happened in Canada. Mm-hmm. But, like, it was, it was something that kind of personally affected me. I was lucky, you know, I worked downtown Ottawa. I was lucky enough that I was far enough away that we didn't really have, we weren't really too affected by it. Uh, our building was in lockdown for, like, six hours. Um, but we were far enough away that it was more of, like, a self-imposed lockdown. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it, it was weird because, like, wh- where I get on the bus downtown Ottawa is really, really close to there. I can see Parliament from where I got on the bus. So, um, yeah, I we... don't know. It, it was kind of, it was it was a big deal. And uh, it hit, you know, uh, worldwide uh, headlines. And uh, it was it was really nice of people. I, I had tons of people during the day check up on me. I, I got so many text messages from, from people I know all, all around the world and all around Canada and stuff like that. But yeah, that was, uh, I guess I want to talk about that a little bit because I figure people might be a bit curious if they know I'm from Ottawa. But yeah, I was, I was like in lockdown for six to eight hours or something like that. Um, but everything was fine. And uh, yeah, people are dumb, but mm. uh, we are stronger as a nation for it. Um, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, We're not really a tradition. political show. So yeah. Yep. Um, and then... To make matters worse, y- your internet went out for like a day. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, like not not to make that sound like a bigger deal, but yeah, like but... it affected me a lot closer than <laughs> than the shooting downtown did, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. So during that was all happening for whatever reason, the power went out for like most of like rural uh, Ottawa. So you were either downtown and locked down, or outside of downtown and no power. Um, and for some reason, that kicked out our internet and like killed our like modem so mm. we lost internet for like 24 hours so I, I came home after all of that was like exhausted you know just like mentally stressed out from that day and then sat down and was like oh yeah no internet until tomorrow great yeah so. <laughs> no uh, i actually did hear about that uh it was on the news and stuff at the lodge and stuff oh, okay. but when you said oh i want to talk about what happened on wednesday i don't instantly think uh like yeah. like disaster and whatever yeah 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 i mean it, it's it, it was it was weird. I mean, it, it was so, when you think about it from like a, 
I don't know, from like a worldwide perspective, I guess I don't view it as that huge of a deal because mm-hmm. it was just one person. Um, but I don't know. It's it's weird. It kind of hits close to home. Uh, and I guess I haven't really been around an event like that um, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. in a couple of years or so. So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I actually yeah. had access to Skype and I remember I went on it and I saw that you were chatting and I remember you had come up like, oh, you know, I think Raymond Plasma lives in Ottawa, even though I wasn't sure because I don't remember where exactly you live. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I remember you were chatting in there and that you said that you were all right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was weird because we had just visited that place. Yeah, like, that was the weirdest part too. Like Ted yeah. came and visited me after BronyCon, right? Yeah. And we like one of the things that we did was we went downtown to Parliament, you know? So we walked around the center block, which is where the guy was. Uh, so we walked around center block and, and we went and I vividly remember us looking up at the war memorial and talking about stuff yeah so um yeah it was it was i guess i guess that kind of hit close to home because i have such vivid memories of that so um yeah i I don't know it it's it it was an unfortunate event and Mm. uh and uh i just i'm just very i feel very blessed to to know so many people who are concerned and and just in general uh the world kind of I feel like everywhere I looked, there was people showing their support uh, towards Canada, and that and that was really that was really really cool um, to to see. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, and uh, yeah, we'll move on to the art because that is a depressing story. And <laughs> yeah, I was are... gonna say on to happier topics. Uh, before we get to our art, we have a really awesome piece of fan art that was sent to us by none other than late customer. De- uh, Dave, um, <laughs> and it is a whole bunch of us uh, at Halloween time, and we have Atmospark and Silver Rain Clouds in a pumpkin, and we have Otaku AP there, and Kira yeah, and Fiona, yeah, I mean, it and then was, all of it us. Was, it was all of the I, I don't know. I guess it's people that are close to Dave in his life, and so yeah, it was it was really cool. I know that he showed a couple like sketches, and he's been wanting to make something, but I guess yeah. I guess it's considered fan art. It's more of like a. I, this is a picture with me and my friends, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Technically fan art. <laughs> I, I do love uh, you, your role in this piece. <laughs> You're just annoying the heck out of him. <laughs> Small, adorable horses. <laughs> Dave knows I love him. Mm. All right. So, for this episode, last week, uh, when we ended the our previous episode, we mentioned that we were going to do some sort of Halloween theme, possibly, maybe. And then and we didn't. Then Yay. we didn't. Yay. But we are doing a themed episode this week. Uh, and it is kind of Halloween related in that we're looking at creepy art. Yeah, what are you talking about? This is Halloween Spooky themed. Spooky uh, art. Too yeah, I guess, I guess creepy. Like, oh, it's not yeah. pumpkins and candy. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, burn. Were well, you doing a me impression? <laughs> that sounds exactly like me right now. Sometimes you rub off on me a little. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. It was a, uh, I don't know. I like. I, I agree. I think creepy and and spooky is kind of like a Halloween thing. Because I mean, yeah. If it wasn't for Halloween, October wouldn't be like a creepy and spooky month. You know. There you go. Yes. There you go. It so, is yeah. the month of what's it? Where going with that? The month <laughs> of harrowing. Tis the season. <laughs> to of be creepy things. Scary. Yeah. Falala. Spooky, Whoa. scary, scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right. What's the first so, piece of art? Uh, Burn is going to go, go first. Yeah, yeah, I can talk. Yeah. I like the fact first. that you definitely put it in the right order then if Burn's going to go first. The document doesn't say go first. Oh, yeah. You don't go first. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I go first this week. All hail um, the document. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, just as a note of warning, these are fairly creepy. They're not gruesome or, you know, they're not, not gory. Safe for work, they're not but... terribly scary. They're just kind of creepy. So, yeah. just FYI. And we have mentioned creepy. in the past yeah. that we would mention that, you know, there's creepy art or whatever yeah, before yeah. we show it. So, it's my more piece... uncanny than anything. So, yes. yeah. Go ahead. Um, actually, I don't know what this one is called, but my piece is, uh, by an artist known as Pigfish, uh, and we've talked about this piece a lot on this show before, but we've never actually brought it up, and I've seen this piece in the Traveling Pony Museum, Mm -hmm. and it shows the Cutie Art Crusaders in a very (laughs) kind of... Cutie Mark Crusaders. (laughs) Cutie Mark Crusaders, thank you, um, in a very abstract concept light. 
so not abstract art, but the concept itself is is abstract. It mm -hmm. kind of shows what their inner talents are. Uh, and Burnt has described it a little bit better than what I'm saying here. Um, but basically, Sweetie Belle is, has a speaker where her mouth should be. Um, Apple Bloom has a light where her uh like Mouth in her mouth be. <laughs> yeah and and scootaloo has flames like engulfing her where, um, where her breathing her out her mouth, should be, <laughs> her right. mouth should be, yes <laughs> uh, so the reason i knew uh how to describe this i guess so well was actually because jesse uh one of the i guess curators of the traveling pony museum for when you and i were there actually mm. explained this piece to us while we were uh like talking to him and like interviewing him on video that is since been lost <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh when when we were talking to jesse he was describing this piece in the museum and like you know his thoughts on it and stuff and we kind of uh i guess took took those thoughts to heart or whatever or mm. remembered them Blech, but whatever but yeah so each of the these features on each of the key mark crusaders kind of like represents their special hidden talent or whatever that kind of the show has been hinting at you know so you have um uh, what is it? Scootaloo being the daredevil. So you have like a target and her breathing fire. They're playing with fire, you know, whatever you have. Uh, and she's kind of like blindfolded because she doesn't see the danger. So it's mm. kind of like these things that are, you know, representative of it. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Allegories for their special talent, you know? Sure. So then you obviously have like the speaker, uh, from Sweetie Belle, you know, singing music sound. Right. And then, you know, engineering, like, things on uh, Apple Bloom with, like, the light bulb and... Equations, uh, schematics, stuff. that kind of thing. Yeah, schematics, yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. 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 I really enjoy this piece um, just because it is more on the creepy side, but it's also, like, really well done and there's a lot of thought put into it. And uh, just because art is, like, creepy or or dark or whatever doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. It's just, you know you have to appreciate it for what it is. And I, I really like how Pigfish depicted the story of who the three Cutie Mark Crusaders are in this kind of darker tone. So I'd like to provide a little, not like necessarily a counterpoint, but to something you just said, you were just saying like, just cause it's creepy or whatever, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. it's bad. And I agree with that point. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, if just be, I, I'd like to extend that to say like, just because you don't like looking at it doesn't mean right. it's bad, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I don't think there, there are some, I, I, let me relate this to a story, uh, that I had from first year university. Um, my, I went to a film class and my film professor, um, would get angry at people when they would leave because we had like lectures and then movies. So like we, they'd leave for the movie portion when we were doing our horror theme. So mm -hmm. we would have horror movies and he would get like mad about it because he said that people weren't truly appreciating the art mm -hmm. and like. You know, you had to look past, you had to think about like why it was making you feel that way and all that. And, and I feel like that's kind of valid, but I, I feel like you also can't dismiss the fact that sometimes there's just not things for you, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I can look, I, personally, I look at this piece and I think it's really well done and I think it's really well made. I don't like it because I think it's that type of creepy that doesn't, like it's not enjoyable for me to view, which is mm -hmm. weird because like the next two pieces are both kind of they're both kind of again creepy, but I en I enjoy them. Um, but I I hear some people sometimes talk about the fact that it's like, you know, if I say oh I don't like this piece because it creeps me out, people are like, well that do that shouldn't be a reason why you don't like the piece, and I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. No, I, I I agree with you. Um, that like if you don't like a piece, then then uh, nothing really needs to force you to like the piece. Um. I think part of the problem is that a lot of people have difficulty looking past, you know, their subjective to reach the objective, you know? Yeah. So, like, so subjectively, it, I don't really like this because it makes me feel uncomfortable or, you know, the, the faces are kind of creepy or whatever. Mm -hmm. However, I, I can look past that to see objectively how the, you know, it's composed and the different elements of it are actually that's... quite well put together. That's the yeah. beautiful point, though. Like, that's the perfect point right there. Uh, because, like, a, n not necessarily a piece like this, but pieces similar. I mean, they are made for that purpose. It's that word that I love. It's uncanny. Um, 
like for a long time i didn't like uncanny and to the point i still don't like uncanny but that's why it exists that's the point of uncanny because as humans it makes us feel uncomfortable because mm -hmm. there's something in our brain that tells us that it's uncomfortable and it's like why does it make us uncomfortable why is it creepy or why don't we like it or whatever so there is a um uh, a display at the Portland Art Museum where an artist made these like cartoony like r almost like super realistic like human busts of heads of like extra like extremely large like children's heads but hmm. they were like the absolute definition of extremely uncanny and they made me extremely uncomfortable and I hmm. hated them I still hate them they're <laughs> gross but like that was the point of them that's why they existed hmm. uh, and it was like to play with that part in your human brain that tells you this is freaking weird and I don't like this <laughs> um, and so like this the point I'm not saying that's the point of this art that we're looking at but there's definitely like uh, hints of that like uncanny sense in it uh, but yeah, anyway, go ahead. You were saying, yeah, um, basically, like, I don't know, certain people like myself kind of like exploring that uncanny, um, feeling, I guess, to a certain extent. I don't like yeah. super, super creepy art, but like, like you were saying, like the rainbow plasma, that you know, everyone has their own tastes and stuff, and so you may look at this, and you may not like it because it is creepy or whatever, but if you, if you appreciate like creepy art. To a certain extent, like I do, then, yeah, you would yeah, find this I, piece. Very I suppose good. the thing is that I think it's perfectly legitimate uh, to not like a piece on the sole basis that it makes you feel uncomfortable, so long as you acknowledge the fact that it's done its job. Right. Yep. And um, I think I think that's I, I think you know these kind of pieces do their job very well. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, um, there's a couple of pieces that we've featured on our show by uh, an artist by the name of Ray Drob. Um, who's actually a fan of the show. Uh, and he is a fantastic artist, and he has some, uh, like, human anatomy that he uses in his ponies, and uh, it kind of dips a little bit into that uncanny valley, and I find those pieces of art absolutely fantastic just because I love playing with that that uncanny feeling, mm. um, whereas other people may not. So, right. Um, uh... Yeah. Yeah, um, at BronyCon, we actually got to, or I guess, uh, Mahauer and I, I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys ever got to, but we got to meet Pigfish uh, in person, and he was super nice, he was a really nice guy, uh, but we talked to him about his art and like brought it up, and like he definitely mentioned that he really does love to play with kind of that uncanny feeling, and actually something that he was struggling with as an artist, which was an interesting point that I wouldn't have guessed, is he's been trying to make his ponies cuter, <laughs> uh, and like seem more feminine. Uh, and like, and he's been building on that and working on that and trying to find a style that he like wants to do that with. And like, that seemed weird. It's almost like the opposite of the struggle of some other artists. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, also at BronyCon, we did meet an artist who loved to use Uncanny. I uh, forget his name, but we did an interview with him. It's on our YouTube channel. Uh, Princess something or other. Anyway. Um, Try yeah. that spuckery! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, I I personally like how this piece is done. Just a because it it does play with that uncanny valley, and also because the the ponies themselves are well drawn. The fire effect is is mm -hmm. fantastic, and um, I don't and know. There's, dif there's different yeah. styles too, so everyone has mm -hmm. a different like style of uncanny that they enjoy. Like I enjoy this style, but I dislike other styles. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. All right, so uh, shall we move on to the next piece? Sounds good. Which would be burned. Oh, me, yeah. Bjorn! Because, uh, cause, Bjorn. Click. Okay, so the piece that I chose was Luna by Shizmu, I believe, or <laughs> Shizmo Zero. No, nah, like, it's definitely Shizmu. Well, is it two zeros there? Is there like a zero and a it's space? It's two zeros. Two zeros, two zeros. okay. It's Shizmu, Shizmu with two zeros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I really like this artist. This artist uh, is gallery is full of like very extremely unique pieces and unique artworks and just unique style uh very unique coloring very limited palettes usually uh sometimes with like compliments and stuff and so like i really like th this piece of luna it's again it's playing with a little bit of that uncanny feeling slightly not uncanny so much in that it resembles certain things but uncanny and almost it's uh i guess i guess because it's not uncanny valley where it's like resembling human but it's still uncanny to where there's like 
uh, interesting feeling about it. Am I still using that word correctly? Yeah. yeah. Close yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah. We'll just say creepy. That's yeah. a creepy yeah. horse. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Because there's there's things that are happening that look kind of creepy, but they're done in a weird way where it's not explicitly like uh, violent or explicit in the terms of grotesque. You know what I mean? Mm. It's you have basically this uh, what is an object of the moon, like actually piercing through Luna, who's kind of like not like drawn like half of her, you know, but there's mm. nothing really um, violent about it or you know, explicit that would get like a rated R rating, but it's just kind of how things are drawn and detailed. There's like, has the moon like going through her head and then through her abdomen. Yeah. yeah it's kind of just creepy and it's cool. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. And obviously there's, there's the, uh, there's the comparison of, of her cutie mark kind of black seeping up and almost being treated like blood or something like that. Yeah, um, I mean, it almost looks like ink because of, you know, like I, I see it yeah. almost as ink because, you mm -hmm. know, it's we're looking at artwork and yeah. uh, it's, you know, it's a digital painting and, you know, it's just black or whatever. But like, yeah, it could totally be seen as like a blood, but it's, you know, it's playing again with like the fact that it is a cutie mark and a bit of shading up above. Well, see, and, I, it, and it, I, it kind of manipulates you too because you look at it and you're like, oh, that's blood. Oh, no, it's black. And it's like <laughs> yeah. the art tricks you. It's yeah. like, no, it's not. <laughs> but see, you I, thought I, it was. <laughs> I think of it as night sky. And that Luna is internally made of the night. She is the night. <laughs> and and bleeding so night. she bleeds night. Yeah. <laughs> so how about how about her hair? That let, it's a pretty interesting interpretation. It's almost like it's gooey. It's like viscous it's made of is the word we used once. Yeah. 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 yeah it's viscous very is a good adjective. Yeah. Jellyfish like. Yeah. yeah, it's very liquidy, you know? I mean you can see it, you can tell that it is transparent and it has qualities about how it is drawn that have a verisimilitude. The word of the day <laughs> <laughs> that mimic mimic liquid. So, you know, you can see basically the background uh, through uh, the hair and then on, on the hair on her head, her bangs, you can see that they're like her uh, coat color is behind it as well, which makes it look liquidy and it is round and organic. The lines on it are, are organic, you know, very round and soft uh, mm -hmm. and whatnot. They're not, you know, sharp edged. So again, more, you know, viscousy qualities. But has little dots, little stars that don't quite look like stars, but they're still dots to, you know, to mimic her hair. Like yeah. it's almost like glitter in like a snow globe. Hmm. I, I wish you were here last week when you said that word because I, I just looked it up and the description was great. I mean, like, <laughs> what's the there, description? There is similitude. Verisimilitude is Verisim the appearance of being true or real. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool because last week we oh, talked yeah. a lot about like things that were like looking kind of realistic and, and stuff like that. So that's a, that's a great word. Yeah. Now that's <laughs> a word of the day calendar. <laughs> Thank you, Art History and my teacher. Shout yeah. out to my Art History teacher. <laughs> so like we've got, we've got this weird like dripping ink night thing. We've got like her gooey hair and we've also got these like blocky like almost carved wings mm. it's really mm -hmm. strange it's kind of like these three different you know you've got this with solids and the and the liquids and the like the like gooey plasmas and it's 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 a really weird like mixture of the three and how they're so like very separated but still part of the same character yeah and that's why yeah. that's really what makes it awesome because like at first glance like when i looked at the piece it seemed inherently simple you know just with like an almost brownish orange background and then uh you know this kind of just the little depiction of luna but there's all these little qualities about it like the hair like the moon like the wings and everything that are just so juxtaposed is a word that you like to use mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that make, oh, yeah. make this piece seem so cool yeah to me anyway. yeah i really i really like um how the piece is laid out because Luna's front and center, and then the moon and her hair, her mane, kind of create this circle around her and uh, really bring your focus in. Mm. Her tail, not so much, but you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a certain aspect of of, of diagonality. Really? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I came out. I'll go um, with it. There's, you know, just because just because the the top right and the bottom left of the piece are kind of empty, whereas the top left and the bottom right, where her mane and tail are, are, are a little more filled. So it it doesn't really do, you know, we've talked about lots of other pieces in the past how they use diagonal lines or diagonal uh, kind of uh, camera work or mm -hmm. whatever composition to mm. create action. It doesn't really do that in this piece, but I find it kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah, like. I, 
a sense of downward moment or movement or gravity sort of mm. um and how she's like kind of hanging from the moon and then like her hair again looks like it's showing like it's being pulled down or dragged down mm. you know what i mean does that yeah. make sense when i say that there's like a feeling of downward movement like things are being pulled down because the fact that they are liquid or they're being drawn as liquid looks like they're dripping down luna or dripping down into the orange and her hair is kind of dropping mm. dripping dripping is a very keyword yeah yeah and i mean the ink too yeah mm. i feel like because we're dealing with like viscous liquids in this piece um the whole movement of di- like the diagonal uh is a lot slower a lot mm-hmm. less um, kind of impactful whereas like in other pieces if you have a lot of sharp lines that are on diagonals that produces a really uh actiony kind of effect i feel mm-hmm. yeah the 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 only thing sharp in this piece are the wings which are stationary and the moon which is kind of like piercing and so it's not really like a it's not really like a movement kind of thing it's just it looks like it's sitting there you know mm-hmm. because because of the way that kind of the the black kind of liquid oh. is kind of sitting it doesn't give off a lot of uh kind of uh, movement cues or anything yeah. like that the moon seems static to me is and that, what i mean yeah. by that is like mm-hmm. it's rigid it is like stable air pasted glued in place is what i mean by static and uh, i mean it's also kind of like centralized in the piece it's not exactly in the middle but it's almost in the middle and how luna is kind of like almost placed on it and like has her hooves on the front of it like she's holding herself up onto it also right. helps make it feel like that to me right mm-hmm. yeah like impaled yeah. i guess yeah definitely she's she's definitely like if anything would be moving or like falling off of the piece it would be luna off of the moon not the other way around mm-hmm. i could totally right. see that too <laughs> yeah i think it's really cool though how you can still have you can have some aspect of of you know I'm going to say diagonalization, but that's like a linear algebra thing. Um, <laughs> you know, you have some element of diagonals in this piece, and yet it's it's bogged down by, again, you're talking about like the viscous hair and the and the other movement cues, which are very obvious to us that they're not moving in, in any particularly fast way, you know? Mm-hmm. But there's also like, a, but that's still a, a good point is that there's strong lines or things going on in this piece that like play well together or, you know, are different from each other. So like the diagonals kind of how you have hair, her and then hair below her and then the wings as well. Uh, and then there's these verticals, which is caused by gravity by like kind of the water and hair dropping. And then there's also a circular, a central one that the moon causes, which is an extremely strong circle that you can see like in the piece, you know. Right. All right. I like yeah, it. I, think... I really, I really enjoy this piece. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen this artist before. I've never seen this piece before. Uh, I really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I love this artist. You go check it out. Shizmu with two I'm, zeros. I'm, I, I will. I'm plugging it also... again. Not, not directly telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, uh, I absolutely will. I, I love this artist's signature too. It's just moo, 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 moo with zeros. <laughs> There needs to be yeah. dashes through that. <laughs> no, um, the last thing, little thing I was going to mention is, uh, like, obviously, it's a digital painting, but also the colors are sort of complements. And what I mentioned is that this artist kind of likes to use muted color palettes. It's not it's not usually bright, vivid that are, like, in-your-face colors. They're always, like, weird kind of, like, off pastel colors. And it, it's, again, really, like, key to this artist's style. And so, like, that kind of muted, dull, muddy orange, but you can still tell that it's sort of an orange in the background, uh, is the complement to Luna being kind of, like, a weird blue, almost a violet, and and then like her hair also being blue. That's a really good um, point. It is kind of yeah. like a dull compliment. Because mm. uh, again, like a big thing when I took color theory is like when you're talking about like compliments and colors, it doesn't always have to be that pure color, you know, like muted colors is a in, or like more dull colors or darkened colors can still be a very strong tool uh, to make like good compliments or colors really react from each other or stand apart or do weird interesting things like these colors don't really pop out or stand out very, a lot to me you know but there's like the, how they're used is unique your color choices don't always have to be in your uh, audience's face you know yeah they can exactly. be used for much more subtle things like i think in here yep it's a great choice of background yeah, yeah. all right shall we move on to our last piece we shall so this one's mine, I guess. I I guess I should introduce it then. <laughs> um, so the one that I picked out um, was called uh, "Library of the Dark" or whoops, "Library of Dark" uh, yep. by Fruit Blood Milkshake, which I think we've had. We featured him his stuff on the show before, mm-hmm. haven't we? Yep. I think so. The yeah. one with like 
so it's Twilight, Luna, and Celestia, and yeah, the Phoenix here's thing. A, here's a request for you. Yes. Whatever right. the Phoenix thing is. <laughs> Ashbird. Right. So, yeah, here. <laughs> so What's anyway. his name? So, Philomena. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Ashbird. Ashbird. The Phoenix? <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed this piece. Something I noticed in all three of the pieces is that there's a pony missing the eyes or having mm-hmm. like weird eyes, which is interesting when it comes to like making you feel kind of creepy. But this one's got, I think, this one out of all of them has the most atmosphere to it. It has the most creepy environment, not just the characters that are supposed to be making you feel creepy. You know, mm-hmm. the yeah. the situation as well is kind of uneasy. The only, like, kind of creepy subject matter was, like, just like you mentioned, kind of the eye being blacked o- blackened over, and she's kind of, like, shedding, like, a black tear. It looks like this even kind of, like, blackness dripping out of the bookshelves. Um, and out of her eye. But... Yeah. Yeah. I said that. He said that. Oh, <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, it's okay. But, uh, but, yeah. But, I mean, it's subtle. It's small, you know? But, like, the majority of the art piece is, just like you mentioned, it's kind of this atmospheric creepy library which is Mm. it's cool in its narrative you know what i mean it's kind of like this kind of key horror-esque uh setting which is again you know what halloween is about it's kind of a little bit about horrors and pumpkins and bloody candy and stupid kids got off my lawn (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean I, i i i think you know when i first saw the episode um that featured this this library or this castle i guess um First of all, amazing episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, it was kind of a, a it was kind of like goofy horror, but, you know, it was kind of like scary themed. Like the whole point yeah. of the episode was that it was a scary old castle. And what I like here is that they they the artist took that kind of uh, prompt and made it into something that was a little bit more mature, I guess, a little bit more realistic, a little bit a little bit darker than I guess the, the show would go for sure. Um, which is something I, I really like about the fandom is that they can take these concepts and explore them a little bit deeper than perhaps the show could do. So um, fun! And <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of times artists get the opportunity to do that. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I I like the fact that, you know, we have the the bookshelves going, you know, diagonally back. So you've got that sense of depth. And then like in the background, there's almost like this... There's almost like this nothingness. Like I know it's mm. like a wall, but it looks like almost like fog. Like there's yeah. I don't think almost like a it wall. opens up I think into it like just a keeps swamp, going. and there's yeah. like there's like a bit of mist coming off of the bottom there, or whether or not that's dust. But it, it looks like the the yeah, bookshelves it, stop and the uh, I, kind of like swamp begins. I definitely think it's like like in this world or thing where she's at, it is kind of like the wall of the castle, right? And so mm-hmm. like those things on the bottom are kind of like cracks in the wall and then it goes up and there's like a hole in the ceiling of the castle with like just a dim light shining through or whatever and she's in kind of, you know, this library depth basement dungeon kind of like thing is what I get from the sense of this. But it is like, it does have that feeling that it almost is like this creepy, eerie, thing that could be like a swamp and like twigs and uh, things on the right like i don't even know what that is on the right cobwebs <laughs> it's very thick like, cobwebs it's yeah. interesting because there's um like the bottom of that wall area is ha- has this atmospheric perspective on it there's like this fog there mm-hmm. yeah but if you go up like it the value drops you get the window so if you look at like the upper right portion you would say oh yeah that's a wall but as you look down towards the lower right uh, portion of the picture, it's like, wait a second, maybe not. Mm-hmm. It messes with you. Yeah, and, it, <laughs> and you know, it was funny, you were talking about this a little bit last last piece, Burn, but again, we kind of get this dull, very subtle uh, uh, compliment between yeah, the do. blue light that's coming in and the yellow and orangey light that's coming off of her horn and, yeah, and kind do. of reflecting off of the, the wall there on the left. If I uh, may bring up a word... It is a has it's a very good use of blorange. I was just about to say, <laughs> is it blorange? Just to be a jerk. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Today's name for the episode is a uh, word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> word of the day calendar is Burndini the Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I. Hmm, I guess hey. you guys weren't weren't going to really talk about it but i i it's such a small little thing that i wasn't even sure i was going to bring it up but i really mm-hmm. like it when artists show light and there's dust particles in the air because mm-hmm. i feel like yeah that like adds so much like, it's such a small <laughs> tiny little detail but volumetric um, lighting is so good <laughs> sorry no, I, 
I just I just like it because it, it I don't know. When I see light often when I see light beams like shafts of light, there's always dust in it. Hmm. Like that's just kind of like something that happens in reality, you know? You well, because that's that's what light beams are. It's like dust, fine dust particles in the air, but then sometimes you get these larger dust particles that shine brighter. And it's cool. that's not really what a beam of light is. Well, no, but yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, like I like it. It just adds like a little. It's very subtle, but it's the details that really matter in the end. Hmm. So I got a cool thing to bring up. Okay. So this thing, going back to our history again, we're talking about verisimilitude. There was also something else I learned. There was an artist who would play with this kind of like painting reality kind of stuff. And what he, there was a technique he used that he became famous for. The artist I'm talking about is called, is uh, named John Constable. In some of his pieces where he would paint real life like kind of settings and make them look uh, very real, he used this little... Uh, technique where he would put like dabs of white, like little tiny dabs of white. So he would paint his scene and he would actually get like a tiny little small brush and then put these tiny little specks of white. And they actually created a term for it and it's called Constable Snow. And what it does is it it was used to mimic um, moisture in like the air or on trees or on water or anything okay. and he became really famous for using kind of this little technique of those white specks because like we see those in real life which goes back to that that word the little magical word that we uh, were using earlier so like those little kind of like ambient specks of dust uh, in the sunlight kind of are similar to that technique uh, that he used when he was like using moisture or water. So sometimes when people will talk about like ambient things in life, when it comes to little tiny specks, they'll talk about like little like constable snow. That's cool. I That's didn't cool. know that that had like a phrase or mm-hmm. like a name. For like it. not that right there isn't quite constable snow, but it's, it's similar to the technique that are used to basically mimic what we see in real life. Right. I mean, yeah. It reminded hmm. you of it. Because it's a tangible thing that we recognize when we see those specks. We don't go, why are there white specks on the painting? Why did someone accidentally sneeze or <laughs> do something onto the painting that made white things go there? Yeah. We instantly recognize it as, oh, that's dust in the, the sunlight. Or yeah. if like we were looking at a piece of like a painted outdoors and there was a bunch of little white specks, you'd be like, oh, I can see those reflections of water droplets or something. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. connect them with things that we know in life and not assume that it's sneezed paint <laughs> sneezed paint I that's can a, I can a I new point form out of how... art by the way <laughs> what sneeze paint it's oh. a new form of art <laughs> yeah can I point out how fluffy she is is mm-hmm. that inappropriate in a creepy episode like <laughs> to point out a happy thing but she's so fluffy I want to die <laughs> uh, I mean I guess that's creepy in a fluffy, creepy she's so fluffy you know? Yeah. See, but this, this, the other ones when I look at the other pieces I'm like get away from me when I look at this one I was like she just needs a hug Aww. Like, honestly, she's had yeah. a long day and I need a pillow. So <laughs> she just so looks very fluffy. Too. Okay? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. fluffy. I think she's painted really well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I like, I really, really, really like the depiction of the wings. I think mm-hmm. that kind of like layered feathering, you know, still yeah. large layers, but it's kind of like sharp pointed and like layered over one on top. One on, I mean, I mean, that was, I can't even speak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the painting on her coat like her fur like in mm. like the chest area and on the legs like it kind of how it's painted it looks or like mimics fur like she is kind of fuzzy even like on her ear and like head when you like zoom in and stuff like how the brush strokes are used there you know mimic horsey Hor- fur right yeah right <laughs> horsey fur <laughs> so, uh, i like it i, I, I like, also like uh, the books yeah you know, it's your turn to say something you like Burks. go on okay i i like uh her hair um we um, talked a little choice. bit about like iridescence <laughs> last week in in mentioning that piece by, I, uh, missed last week. I know i'm sorry <laughs> uh but th- this is a bit more of a duller iridescent look but like if you look the main on her left so our right is like very wispy very like cloud like like going down her neck <sighs> yeah, yeah. and then but it gets solid like more solid as you go up and her tail, her tail. too You've got, yeah. like, those strands, you know, yeah. that, like, mimic, like, she's, like, stressed. Yeah. Did you, like, uh, ju- did you just mix, like, Eastern European <laughs> with, like, Wisconsin? <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. That was um, the weirdest me. mixtures of accent I've ever heard. It's my turn to say mm-hmm. things I like. Okay. Uh, 
I like the books, the like glowy, like creepy books. And they're like, I don't know, they're like ominous. And like, there's this weird chained book on the left. Like, why do you need to chain up a book? They look like spiders. They do. I think <laughs> yeah. the books are the spiders, actually. Well, they're, they're like chains. The they're actually, they are actually chains. Burn made a good point, but yeah. it's a cool library, the evil library. Oh, oh yeah, those aren't. Sp- oh wow, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they are. They are chains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so, um, there's a piece similar to this, but a complete different feeling, and it's by Mystic Alpha, and it's Twilight trying to read from the same library. And it's and then it's uh, Celestia picking her up and like no you can't read these books and there's like little like evil death things like coming out of the book and she's like no I want to read you guys remember mm-hmm. that I'm yeah. yeah all I can yeah, remember yeah. is like oh yeah 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 I think yeah. I do mm-hmm. sorry who's so that just, by again the evil that was by Mystic, Mystic Alpha, Alpha. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 they remind this okay. reminded me that like evil library I was like ah oh, Twilight's been in this library before that was but that was one was a bit less she dark. Was a Philly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite a little bit less dark. Sorry, off topic. Uh, sorry. I have one final thing about this piece, uh, and that is that I really like how Fruit Blood Milkshake mixed a whole bunch of like this creepy like subsets. So like you have the the creepy ambiance. So you have all this shaft of light, the darker colors, the muted colors, the whole library setting and whatnot. You have uh, Celestia herself, which is that uncanny creepy. Uh, and then you have like these books, which is kind of like a foreboding, like monstrous, creepy kind of almost mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really well done. Yep. And those colors help so much. Like we talked about already, but this color is so good because you've right, got like the, you the red going to the green <laughs> and the orange and blue and it's all muted and it's dark. All right. I'm cutting and you so, off. No, I want to repeat myself again that we've said in other episodes that when you mix colors that are complements kind of together, they create like a dull kind of gray. So Mm -hmm. that green in like the top portion of the piece and everywhere there is dark or gray, it is actually still like it has a tint to it. It has a color to it. It's, you know, it's partially green complementing the light and stuff like that. And it's all, it's good. Fruit Blood Milkshake, you're a good artist. You know what you're doing. (laughs) All right. Let me just, give me, give me a second here. I'm just going to look up in my, oh, my word of the day is defenestrate, (laughs) which is what I'm going to do to you. Can I I help you with that? I don't think you can say that on the show. I have never defenestrated anyone. Do you you not know what defenestrate means? I like my gonads. It it means to throw you out a window. Oh. So, anyways, let's move on to the questions because we're done with art. I'll just fenestrate your face. Uh, you can do that. It's a thing. <laughs> um, all right. So our questions this Got week, em. because we don't have our question master, will be read by me. Uh, and then the second question will be read by Burned in a silly voice. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the very first one is, what is your favorite MLP fan theory? Or do you have any theories of your own? Uh, by E.I. Wolf. All right. I have one off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's the right phrase, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> the tip top, yeah, okay. Um, my favorite fan theory is that Star Swirl, the Bearded, and Discord are one and the same. Um, it's kind of been passed around a bit. There's been kind of hints in the show that it could be potentially like that Discord was Star Swirl, the Bearded, and then he like had an accidental spell that turned him into Discord, and chaos ensued or whatever. But um, I don't know. It's it's kind of an interesting theory, and I like it. I I don't know if I prescribe to it like completely, but it's it's interesting. Cool. Yeah. How about you burned any fan theories that you latch onto? Uh, I'm sure there's a few, but I can't think of them. You like Lyra Bonbon? Bon. That's kind of a fan theory. I thought a fan theory. <laughs> Shipping doesn't count. Give it's not a that. fan theory. It's reality. Any kind of like <laughs> things that I see, I kind of I don't know. I enjoy like fan art things. It's it's fun to see all of them, but I don't really have any theories of my own. I don't really theory craft much. There's a lot of cool Burn's like stuff to do with like Light- Nightmare Moon and like how that actually went down. I mean, I know yeah. they've shown it on the show now, but yeah. you know, there's stuff like Children of the Night and other things like that that yeah. kind of describe the Luna and Celestia interaction. Hmm. They're like you're talking about favorite fan theories. I mean, one of my favorite things is Children of the Night, so we can go with that. That's fair. That's completely yeah, fair. Go with that. I, like yeah. that. I like the whole thing where it's like I'm Luna and these children are sad. I'm gonna take the way and so she's like, you know, I, you took my children and then the things and yeah. happen and yeah, yeah. it's alright. Yeah. 
So my favorite, my favorite fan theory, well, it's actually not a fan theory, it's a theory that I have, that uh, Twilight Sparkle is actually a ghost. She's the ghost of Bruce Willis. Um, (laughs) And uh, she's untouchable. Yeah. No, so she's just she's invincible, like no, that she, movie, untouchable. No, she's no. like she's a superhero. She can't die. That's why she like gets through the hydras and stuff, and she never dies in the series when she should have. No, wait, wait. Right? So she she saves the world by uh, by finding the fifth element and uh, getting some stones out of a blue alien, and then oh wrecking my them gosh, in the, the elements of harmony are the stones. No, oh she's, she's oh, yes. just really good at beating up Russians and walking acro- across grass. Glass, mm-hmm. damn it. <laughs> Multipass. Why can't I talk today? <laughs> Multipass. <sighs> anyways, yes, she died at the end of Sixth Sense. Uh, anyways, <laughs> any more, any more, any more Bruce Willis jokes? Uh, <laughs> Keep her on. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, yeah. Kaye, mother bucker. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Burned. The yes. second question demands your attention. Okay, you you guys got to pick a voice for me though. What do you want to hear? What's, what's a burn? What's a burn voice? I want to hear you want Berndini me to the wizard. Berndini the wizard. Yeah. He's, oh god. Berndini, of course, being of Swedish descent. Swedish descent. I because I don't know if I can do wizard, but I might be able to do sweet Swedish. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Time to defend all of Sweden. Wait, isn't Remislak Swedish? Remislak yes! is Swedish. Oh my god, it's my <laughs> Remislak. Remislak, I'm and going Nash to defend your people. <clears throat> So how do you usually spend your holiday? Sent in by Ramuslak. <laughs> you sound you sound like Luna in um, Friendship is Witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> you smell like cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So we looked at that question and we decided that because we didn't have any Halloween questions, this one was close enough that we could kind of just shift it a little bit and and talk about Halloween. So you know how we usually spend our Halloween. Uh, so yeah. Okay, I guess I'll go first. Then. <laughs> yeah, you go first. Uh, all right. So um, I usually spend my Halloween by uh, well, I guess these days I don't really do much. I like get a bunch of candy that's low priced because everything's on sale <laughs> after Halloween, and I stuff it into my face. Um, <laughs> as is tradition. Yeah, as is tradition. Um, no, you're not allowed to chew. That's kind of like the thing in for Halloween. Yeah, it's it's really bad manners if you yeah. chew. <laughs> um, but what I used to do, I had this tradition that I used to do when I lived in Toronto. Um, I would uh, sit around and play video games with uh, one of my best friends who lived like right uh, down the street. And we would do this every single Halloween and we hand out candy. So we would, you know, have the bowls at the front. My parents, you know, they got so tired of, of Halloween after so many years of handing out candy. They were just like, you do it. So we would, we would, because the room where like the video games and stuff were was right by the front door. We would sit there and whenever someone would come up, we'd walk out and give them candy and whatever. And because we were right there, you know, the candy was right there. We would like eat it at the same time. So we'd basically like eat half of it and give the other half away. <laughs> uh, but it was really cool. It was kind of like our, a little tradition that, that we would do. Hmm. Oh, cool. Neat. Uh, I used to go trick or treating back when I was really young. Well, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then I would go to parties, uh, like Halloween parties, costume parties, uh, and that was fun. Nowadays, wild not really parties, much of anything, just like rainbow plasma, grab candy, eat candy. I don't like. I don't like wearing costumes. I not because. I don't like costumes, but because I'm really lazy and I don't want to make a costume, because I'm really bad at making a costume, so I feel like I either have to spend a bunch of money to buy a costume, which I'm going to use like once in the year, yeah, or just not wear a costume. So See, like, I usually just I don't have, wear a costume. I have good ideas for costumes, but like I'm the same way. I'm like I'm gonna spend a lot of money, spend a lot of time, and then just like you know wear this costume once. Although I have to say, in college we did a Disney themed party and i was emperor cusco and it was an awesome costume <laughs> that's great I, yeah. I i guess it kind of depends on how many people like you, because i can't really justify it because like i'll go to work and like like 50 people will see me there but like only maybe, maybe 10 of them will like actually comment about anything and it's yeah. like then I'm, then I'm done you know i don't have any other plans so i made this costume yeah. for 10 people who are kind of like ah. <laughs> you know, get back to work. See you at work tomorrow. Yeah, I should. I should, uh, I should wear a, a pony costume into work. Yeah, that'll go well. Halloween. Yeah, no. <laughs> I do have wings and ears. I'm not yeah. gonna wear them though. Yeah. 
We're Burnt. normal people. We just Burnt. wear wings what's, what's and ears. Your, what's your Halloweeny tradition? You live in like the middle of nowhere. Does anybody actually trick or treat near you? Uh, sometimes we get like some of the local kids from like houses nearby within ten minute walking distance. <laughs> like we have like five houses on our street, you know. Yeah. So, but I think one or two of them have kids. So we get some, but it's pretty much none. But we get enough to like we can just put a bowl outside and no one cares. Hmm. What right. I want to get is one of those spider things that like <laughs> you have, there's like a pressure pad and you put it underneath your mat and you put the spider behind the candy bowl. And if they step on your welcome mat in front of your door, it's like, ah, it fucking, like, it <laughs> the jumps candy at springs them. out of them. Yeah. The friggin' no, the spider, not the candy. Spray candy at them. That'd be sweet. <laughs> Uh, now no. I just imagine I just imagine you this is a completely different scenario but I imagine you like sitting in like a rocking chair like outside of your front door <laughs> with like a bowl of candy and you can see like you, you have like a long driveway so you can see the ki- the kids at the very end and yeah. like you just you, like yell at them to like get off your lawn and like you take the candy like a handful and just throw it at them <laughs> get, off my, get off my lawn <laughs> yeah, I mean I was saying to you guys like uh, I did the whole like being little trick or treating thing I was blessed in Alaska of all things so normally it was wading through snow to yeah. go trick or treating <laughs> yeah. uh, there was one time I remember that was a lot of fun it was like when I was about the age where I go trick or treating by myself with like my friends you know hmm. uh, guy, I don't know how old I was 14, 13 something like that uh, and it was like knee deep snow and we put on snow pants and then like cruddy you know robes or whatever the heck I think I was death or something <laughs> over that and we would like run through the snow and go trick or treating we knew all the best neighborhoods you had the big candy bars and stuff mm. the candy uh, bars those are from yeah. times past that's what, Dude, that's you- what uh, my house is going to do this year we're gonna buy a bunch of like of the big candy bars and hand them out. Yeah, um, be so we're gonna be, gonna be that be house. We're gonna be that cool house. house. Nowadays, Dude. Burns just like dresses up as a fairy and sits in front of his computer. <laughs> I guess that's every day. See, now Do you're you... gonna have to take a picture of that and like put it somewhere. <laughs> I, I think he needs to turn his webcam on for like all of Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I could make a sick costume. I could get like a cowboy hat or something because I've been not sick shaving costume, for like bro. I've been not shaving for like the past three months, and so like. My mustache is super curly again, mm-hmm. and it's fantastic. You could be like and a then villain. for some reason, that you know that little tuft of hair that like grows underneath your lip. It's kind of like that little soul patch thing. Soul patch, yeah. yeah. That for some reason has been doing like double time, and it's like longer <laughs> than all of my other hair. And for some reason, it curls up and juts out of my face the same way that my hair grows. So like my hair, you know how you brush it to one side? It's going to my my uh, right side, and then the hair growing out of my stupid little soul patch thing is curling up and going to my right side, so it matches the curls on my mustache. And yeah, stop that's, talking about how your facial hair is growing. <laughs> that's a day in Burns' out, life. So, so like I could be like I could be like Frito Bandito. I don't know. So wait, Frito that's Bandito. what my mom calls me. This entire episode burned. Was it just a setup for you to talk about your facial hair? <laughs> you know, more or less. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, so, so not that one, I don't enjoy talking about my mustache. I guess, I guess you'd have a sweet mustache. Um, I guess, Thank like you. A, one more, one more, like little question for me, like as a side thing to do with Halloween. Like, what did you guys usually use for like gathering up the candy when you used to go trick or treating? Because I would take pillowcases. Pillowcases. Yeah, pillowcases. Yeah, dude. Yeah. All right, up top. Yeah. Uh, absolutely pillowcases every single time it was they great. were the best yeah they're huge and you get the long pillowcases because you yeah. need all the candy yeah Back i would never I, was... I would never fill them that would be crazy like i probably could have just taken like a regular bag with the amount of trick-or-treating that i actually did but mm-hmm. i don't know there's just something about the fact that like you bring out like the the big pillowcase and it's like that expectation of like maybe this year i could fill it uh, yeah <laughs> yeah i guess i uh, all out I kind of sit around and wait to get invited to something. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I remember like a couple of Halloweens ago when I had a girlfriend, I got invited to go to a costume party there and it was pretty much like an excuse for all the women to dress up like sexy anything. Right. So my girlfriend was like a sexy mobster. All right. That was a, that was a good <laughs> well, uh, I think yes. we're running up on time here. High school was a good time. <laughs> Let me tell you when. <laughs> they tell these stories. Okay, about how so, short that skirt was. So, okay, we need to do the plugs. That was the questions. Thank you very much mm-hmm. for people who keep sending in questions. Uh, we still got some to get through. Um, but Send yeah, me pictures send of your sexy you costumes. <laughs> Preferably women. Okay, so, Burnt, why don't you do the plugs for us this week? 
Okie doke. Uh, let's see. We have stuff. We have a DeviantArt. It's cutiearchcrusaders.deviantart.com. And then we have uh, email, which is uh, cutiearchcrusaders at gmail.com. It's where you send your sexy Halloween photos to. And we have a Twitter, which is at cutiearchcrusade. We have a Jesus. We have everything. We have a <laughs> Tumblr, which is cutiearchcrusaders.tumblr.com. We have a Facebook, which is facebook.com slash cutiearchcrusaders. And, and last, probably have but something not else. least, last but not least, something that's very important to mention this week, we mm -hmm. have a YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash QDR Crusaders. And the reason why this is important is because if you are sitting right now and listening to this podcast and you are on the YouTube channel for Everfree Network... Uh, all then, thirty something people that watch that. Then you we need love you. to you need to get off your butt right now. Head over to youtubecom slash Crusaders and hit the subscribe button there because this is the final episode that's going to be going up on EFN's YouTube. Subscribe, mm -hmm. like. So if you want to keep getting the show, then you know you can either keep heading out to the Everfree Network uh, live streams. You know every uh, week Tuesday at eight p.m. Eastern. On Everfreed's live stream, we're definitely still premiering there, but uh, we are moving over all of our YouTube uploads to QDR Crusaders on YouTube, so go there and subscribe if you want to keep seeing our stuff, because that's where we're going to be exclusively from now on. Share uh, our videos. Yeah, so if you're, if you're on Everfree Network's channel right now and you haven't subscribed, then get your little butt over there, because, uh, yeah, that's where we'll be posting from we now you. on. Yes. By the so, way, the YouTube stuff gets posted at 9 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday, right after the live stream premiere uh, finishes. Yes. Whee! Yay! So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing from now on. So again, go subscribe there, show us some love, and uh, Do it. yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, that's 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 basically everything. I was going to mention that, but then you kind of you forgetting that kind of segued right into it. So it was great. <laughs> so, I think I think yeah. Burns like off his own <laughs> I think, world. I think we broke Burned. Yeah, I yeah. think you you asking him to do a Swedish accent just kind of like put he's him too into busy a twirling his mustache and thinking yeah, about yeah. which direction his facial hair is growing. <laughs> yeah, I am. yeah. I can chew on my soul patch. All right. Well, my word of the calendar. Uh, my word um, of the calendar. Um, <laughs> can I be done with this podcast? Can I, I think just we're done here? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, yeah. I don't so, know what's happened to me recently, but I can't talk. I I don't know. It's as weird. an ending note, I can note, talk in funny accents. As an as an ending note, I would like to wish everyone a very happy Nightmare Night slash Halloween uh, from all of the Cutie Crusaders to you. I hope you guys have fun, whether you're dressing up or just being lazy or like dressing us. sexy. Like <laughs> do you guys do you guys remember when ponies aired when there was Halloween? Me neither. When's that happening? Good Anytime lord, soon? yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> mm. All right, well, that's everything <laughs> for this week. Thank you guys for watching, whether or not you're on the live stream or on YouTube. We love, love you all the same. same. Burned. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Rainbow Plasma. <laughs> well, that's burned. I'm Fluttergear317. And have a happy Halloween. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Too spooky! <laughs> Too spooky, five me! <laughs>